Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety with the ST's STM32 Cube IDE. Now, of course, we need to have an STM32 <coughs> evaluation board, and I have a number here, different boards, Cortex M4, Cortex M7s, but the one I'm going to use to, today to demonstrate is one of the smallest STM32 boards, and that is this Cortex M0 and this particular board is actually almost this size and it has 32k of flash and 4k of ram okay so this is the stm32 cube ide and inside here i've created a number of different projects for this processor and i've got uh, well, let's go and, and build it and there we can see it's built it and we can see it's not using very much memory in this particular case Right, so what I'd like to be able to do is first of all to analyze this code and find out is it is it uh, compliant to a standard such as MISRA. I'd like to be able to check the quality of the code, maybe measuring metrics like the cyclomatic complexity. And then I'd like to be able to execute the code on the target. And as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually exercised? So. Let's go and first of all check we can build this from a batch file. So here I've got a batch file and this is going to call a headless build. So I need to close down my IDE and let's perform the, the build. So there we can see it needs to be closed because it's calling this headless build. So it's done the clean, now it's doing a build and that's now built my executable. So now what I want to do is to do exactly the same, but this time I'm going to do it using the build import. So inside here, I've got the build.bat that I've just run. So let's run this again. And this time we're going to listen to what actually happens as we perform this headless build. So there we've got the, the clean. Now it's going to perform the headless build and we can see we've compiled a number of files where we have the executable. We have the source files. We should also have the include paths as well as the preprocessor symbols. So now effectively I've got everything I need in order to be able to open this in TV Vision and perform the static analysis. Now to save time, I've already opened it in TV Vision, performed the analysis, and so we can very simply take a look and view maybe a code review. So here we can see this code was not written to be compliant to MISRA and we have quite a few violations. If I was to double click on a particular violation, we can see it highlights it inside an editor. In this particular case, into to ASCII, as we can see here, returns a value. I'm not doing anything with it. And what I ought to do is to cast this to void to say, I know this returns a value. I'm just not using it. Right, let's uh, close that down. And now maybe let's take a look at the quality of the code. Let's take a look at a call graph. So system call graph is showing us all the functions I've written here. And what I'd like to be able to do is take a look and measure a number of metrics. Maybe I'd like to look at metrics like the cyclomatic complexity. Well, I can sort and I can find the most complex function it has a value of nine. Well, let's view that graphically with a flow graph. And here we have a graphical representation of the code. If I click on a block of code, it shows me the corresponding block over here. If I was to click on a block on the flow graph, we can see the corresponding block over here. Now, what I'd like to be able to do now is to execute this code. And as it executes, find out, well, which blocks have we effectively executed? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instrument the code. I'm going to put probes at the start and at the end of every block and then we'll be able to find out what coverage have we obtained. So let's close this down and now let's perform the dynamic analysis. This is now going to generate the instrumented code. It's then going to perform the build. So once again, it's going to perform the, the headless build. This is a little slow, but we can see that's now executed. And now I'm performing the execution on the target. So using the, the GDB to, con to talk to the SD link, uh, I've executed, I've got the results back. We can now take a look and see well, what coverage did we obtain? So let's take a look at a coverage 
graph this time and uh, as we can see well the coverage is is pretty good it's just the integer to ascii where i haven't got 100 percent well let's view that on a flow graph and this time we can see graphically very clearly which paths we've taken in green and the paths we've not taken in red so why haven't we taken this path well it looks like i've never had a value that was less than 180. so i want to get additional coverage of this i could use that I could use the unit testing tool in order to complement that coverage. So let's invoke TB run. And inside TB run, I'm going to go and open a sequence of test cases that I've created previously. So here I've got all my unit tests. So let's open the one for the integer to ASCII. And let's go and execute this on the target. So that's now generated a harness. It's built it. It's now connecting to the, the target it's downloading it and we've now got the results back from the target so if we click on an individual test case we can see the inputs and expected outputs and in each case we can see the tests have passed at the same time we can now take a look at the coverage and if we take a look at the integer to ascii function we see we've actually got a hundred percent statement branch and mcdc so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can perform functional safety with ST's STM32 Cube IDE. And if you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.